Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. Thank you guys for joining me. We are on part two of my series on pep talk prayers. Make sure if you don't have the book, the link is below in the description, uh, description underneath this video, and it is on my community page. I would love for you to get a copy of it, and you can do a review. You can share. You can like, subscribe, and just join in with me on this journey. But God had given me some little excerpts. Again, pep talks. These are not super long videos, but just some quick little words to kind of boost your spirit and to make you think. Because now we're in a season right now. God is doing so much and there are many little things that are going to hit us like an avalanche. Things are going to just hit us in abundance and overflow. And let me tell you something, what's going to be most important about that is that if you don't pay attention to those little tweaks and those little things that God wants you to address, that avalanche could crush you versus keep you. You want your avalanche to put, avalanche, excuse me, to put you in a place where you can feel that God is keeping you. You can feel that overflow, okay? Don't let that avalanche crush you when it comes. So that brings me to today's excerpt from the book on page 73, and it is called The Promise. And this is about action steps. Now, hear this out. This is what I have in here. We must be transformed by the renewing of our minds. At some point, retaining a ton of information with poor execution will land you outside of God's will. How many of us have done that? I was only able to write this, y'all, because I've done it for decades until I realized it was not getting me to God's perfect will for my life. Listen to me. I am a student of life. So, honey, I will read you out of house and home. I will watch something. I will pray about something. I will do this, 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 and this. And I would have so much information, but I would not have the proper execution. I want you to really think about that because let me tell you what happens when you complete a book or you go to a seminar or you do something that you invest in to make yourself better, to give you more wisdom and understanding. It's almost like we get a false sense of accomplishment, like, oh, this is great. But what I had to learn was even if I finish a book or if I get a certain amount of information or something that I've been desiring, the feeling of accomplishment doesn't come until I actually take what it is that I've learned and put it into action. I realized, which is really why I put this in this book, is that there were so many people that were still stagnant and they had grown angry with God because they're like, I went to school and I did this and I can't get a job and I did this and I got all this wisdom and knowledge. And I, and, and, and okay, don't check out on me, but sometimes it's because something else is going on and you might not be able to see it because. You're landing outside of the will of God and you just don't catch it like that because you're thinking I've done all that I was supposed to do and maybe God wants you to have a different approach, okay? So think about that. Here's the next part. You can receive praise from the world and God could still be displeased. Be careful not to nickname things a blessing from God when it does not line up with his word or his desire for your, for your life. Whew. Are you currently engaged in something that you kind of maybe nicknamed or slapped God's name on it? And you kind of know that he don't really want you to do that. Or he don't really want you to be with them. <sighs> Get that some thought, okay? Again, I know sometimes these things suck when I talk about them. But listen... I'm here to get you to your lane, not my lane. I'm using my lane and my purpose to get you to yours because you have your own thing. And I have figured out what I'm purposed to do in my lifetime is to get people to do what they purpose to do. And let me tell you something. A lot of people don't get there because they let other people tell them what to do. And they're not listening to God. Other people saying, oh, this is so great. I'm so proud of you. Oh, my God. Oh, you, no, I can't believe you were able to do that. Oh, my God. You guys are such a beautiful couple. And God be like, I ain't give them that project to do. And I ain't give them that business. And I certainly didn't give them that spouse. Woo. Yeah. This is important because today is called the promise. This will keep you from the promise. That's why it says self 
driven success. Make sure there's no self driven success in this, in this way, excuse me, in the way of what God wants you to do. Now, now let me give you a disclaimer. You do need to be self driven. I'm not, this is not super biblical here. This is practical. This is like Proverbs in full effect. Like you still have to be wise. You still have to get things done and do the work. Your prayers got to have legs, right? But what I want you to do is just really think about that. And don't be offensive, y'all. Don't be upset. Just think about it. And it, and, it, and if it feel a little bad, let me tell you, if there's anything I'm saying and you feel in some type of way, it might be because it's hitting home. And you don't want to give the enemy the satisfaction of feeling like, ha ha, they so caught up in anything that they don't want to hear nothing nobody say. So huh, I can keep them in the chokehold. Don't you get that joke of that type of power over you? You hear me? Don't you do that. Don't do it because if you if you do that, it's going to genuinely make you feel like you are inadequate and you will never get to the promise of God. Now, let's wrap up right here. I do a heart check in this bad boy. Let's go. Number one. Why are you rushing to do this? Is this something that you're rushing to do right now? Are you rushing to get married? Are you rushing to go to this place or do this or do that? Are you rushing? Who am I talking to? I feel the Holy Spirit. Who am I talking to? What are you rushing to do? And if you're rushing, what is the root cause of that desire? Some of you are rushing to do things that God didn't even tell you to do. My goodness. Check this out. Remember, this is a pro tip. God is not in a hurry for success. I'm going to say that one more time. God is not in a hurry for success. He will give you success. That's in, talks about that in Joshua. He will give you success. He talks about that in Psalm 118 and multiple times in the word of God. But ask yourself, why are you rushing? Why are you rushing? And for some of you, you're not rushing. That doesn't apply, but maybe number two does. How about this? Is this a God-inspired deadline or a self-driven deadline? Did you, did you say the day it should start? Did you say the day it should drop? Did you say the day you should go be with that person because your biological clock is ticking? Or did you say, oh, well, man, you know, I'm a grown man. Now I got all my stuff together. I'm ready to do it right now. Or did God tell you that? Did you, did you say, oh, well, I'm going to start my business right now because Black Friday going to be in two months. And I'm going to have my stuff together. That sounds great in theory. But if God did not tell you to do that, you can spend thousands of dollars and might not make a dollar for Black Friday and be in the red because you did that in your flesh and you let other people say, oh, it's such a great idea. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Y'all, we have to learn how to take accomplish, uh, 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 excuse me, compliments and appreciation from people and not use that as gospel. We have to use that as fuel and we take that and say, God, I'm so glad I was able to do something credible and something that people enjoy. But because you're not a limited God, I could probably do a million more things if you let me do it. I know I have the propensity and the capability to do it. Is this the thing you want me to pursue, though, even though I'm great at it? See how that just completely pivots everything? And you're not, you're not holding on again. Here we go, the enemy with that chokehold. You're not over here thinking you're subject to do something because everybody else says it's great. And just because you know God gave you the ability to do it. You're assuming that God is telling you to do it and it's not what he's telling you to do. So really sit with that for a second because that's going to be important moving forward. And number three, would you be angry if God told you to throw out what you thought meant success? Would you genuinely be able to walk away and not fight him on it? Or would you struggle because you feel like what the world is telling you is success seems better than what God is telling you? How about either way? It doesn't matter because here's the thing. If your heart is pure and if and if it hasn't been and you're working on it, I can promise you something. If you keep seeking it to get to God, I can guarantee you he will purify your heart. I can guarantee you that he will allow you to be in a space of renewal. I can guarantee you, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And wherever you land, you will land inside of his will. Now, I don't know how you're going to land there, but remember that Romans 12 and 2. And I hope that this message today from the book Pep Talk Prayers, it is on Amazon Prime. The link is in the description and it's on my community page. I hope that you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one that's coming up in a couple days. I'm wired to inspire and I hope you are too.